series of seemingly random daylight knife attacks at multiple locations across the heart of Manhattan, leaving two men dead, a woman badly injured, and a city trying to find some sense of it all. Surveillance video captured the man identified as the suspect on the street handling a kitchen knife that police say he used to stab his victims. Tonight, the 51-year-old suspected killer is in police custody after a two-and-a-half-hour reign of terror, walking considerable distances between locations where he attacked without provocation. Correspondent Antonia Hilton joins us now at the scene of one of the attacks. Antonia, is there any known connection between the attacker and the victims? Lester, authorities say these attacks were completely unprovoked and that no words were exchanged between the victims and the suspect. This corner right here is where the third and final victim was attacked, and she's still fighting for her life in a hospital tonight. Tonight, chilling video of a suspect police say was preparing for a stabbing spree in New York, donning a hoodie, putting on gloves, and pulling a knife from his bag. The senseless violence should never happen. Officials say 51-year-old Ramon Rivera used these knives to stab three people unprovoked. This is our suspect for all these stabbings. Leaving two men dead and one woman in critical condition. Well, I'm very nervous walking the streets of New York anyway, so to hear this is really upsetting. The random attacks began at 8.20 a.m. this morning on Manhattan's west side, where Rivera stabbed his first victim, a 36-year-old construction worker, according to police. Police say Rivera then moved by foot across the city. About two hours later, he stabbed another 68-year-old man out fishing by the East River. And just before 11 a.m., police say he stabbed a 36-year-old woman near the United Nations headquarters, the woman still fighting for her life in a local hospital. A cab driver followed the suspect and tipped off the NYPD. I just heard a commotion from where I was, uh, stepped outside, heard what people were saying, and reacted. This witness says he saw the arrest. That's when he put his hands up. He went on the ground, no struggle, no anything. He didn't fight. Rivera has an extensive criminal record with eight arrests in the last year. City officials say he has a documented history of mental health concerns. It is a clear, clear example of the criminal justice system and mental health system that continues to fail New Yorkers. Antonia Hilton, NBC News, New York. We turn now to the growing scrutiny over President-elect Trump's pick for Attorney General, former Florida Congressman Matt Gates. Republican senators are demanding to see a House Ethics Committee report about Gates. And today, Halle Jackson spoke to the attorney for a witness who testified before that committee. President-elect Trump's pick to run the Justice Department facing an intensifying spotlight. As NBC News has learned, the House Ethics Committee will meet Wednesday, according to a source familiar, to discuss its investigation into now former Florida Congressman Matt Gates. The committee investigating allegations of sexual misconduct and illicit drug use, which Gates denies, including that he had sex with a then 17-year-old at a Florida party in 2017. That accuser's attorney, John Clune, wants the House report to be released in a statement saying she was a a high school student and there were witnesses. Joel Leppard represents one of those alleged witnesses whom NBC News is not naming. What did your client yeah, witness so in this party? She was walking outside to the pool and she observed to a right her friend who was 17 at the time of uh, having sex with Representative Gates. They were leaned up to what she described to as a, a game table of some type. Leppard says his clients testified to the House Ethics Committee this spring. Did your client believe that Gates at the time knew that her friend was underage? Yeah, so the House was curious about that. She testified that her belief was that Representative Gates had no knowledge that she was under um, 18, that she was 17 years old at the time he was having sex with her. She also testified that when Representative Gates found out that she was underage, that they stopped their sexual relationship and did not resume it until after she turned 18. Leopard says his clients, both the alleged witness and another woman, testified Gates paid them repeatedly for sex and drugs. Leopard says the FBI asked his client in 2020 to record a phone conversation with Mr. Gates as part of a Justice Department investigation into sex trafficking and obstruction of justice. But prosecutors ultimately declined to bring charges. The Department of Justice declined to prosecute Matt Gates for these allegations. So how should people square that decision with everything that you've laid out here today? 
whether or not a federal prosecutor takes a case and decides to move forward on a trial or move forward on an allegation is that particular prosecutor's decision. It doesn't mean they didn't do it. Gates has long denied the allegations against him and in a response to the House Ethics Committee in September said, your correspondence of September 4th asks whether I have engaged in sexual activity with any individual under 18. The answer to this question is unequivocally no adding he has not used drugs that are illegal and writing the lawful consensual sexual activities of adults are not the business of Congress, suggesting investigators have a sinister motive to harm him. Leopard says the women he represents want the ethics committee to share what it knows publicly so Americans can judge for themselves. They did testify, both of them, that they consented to the activities. Um, they were also asked whether or not they were victims, and, and she broke down in tears, and she said it's a very complicated question. Did your clients make any assessments in their testimony about Mr. Gates's fitness or judgment to serve in office? They're very careful about what they might express publicly, but one did say, I do not think a man like him should have that much power. And Howie joined me here in the studio right now. We should be clear, Speaker Johnson is opposed to releasing this report. Yeah, that's right, Lester. He thinks it could open a Pandora's box since Gates is no longer in Congress. But tonight we're learning that some senators on the Judiciary Committee are not ruling out witness testimony. The FBI is declining to comment. A representative for Gates declined to address specific questions about our interview, but earlier had described the allegations as baseless and intended to derail the second Trump administration. Lester. All right, Howie Jackson, thank you. It all comes as the president-elect vows to make good on his campaign promise to use the military to deport undocumented migrants. Gabe Gutierrez reports. Tonight, president-elect Trump's campaign promise to carry out a mass deportation of migrants is taking shape. He responded true to a post saying he will declare a national emergency and use military assets to deport undocumented immigrants. He's pledged to start with convicted criminals. On day one, I will launch the largest deportation program of criminals in American history. Trump's new borders are set today. He's heading to Mar-a-Lago this week to put final touches on the plan. We will prioritize public safety threats and national security threats. Second thing is secure that border. Lock that border down. Two sources familiar with the planning tell NBC News the incoming Trump administration is already talking to private prison companies about drastically expanding immigrant detention centers to use for a short period of time between arrest and deportation. The administration also considering restarting family detention. Democrats are blasting the deportation plan. The idea that soldiers are going to be carrying out um, these types of deportations, I think, number one, it's just not something that we in the United States are used to seeing. It all comes as some of Trump's cabinet picks face mounting scrutiny. An attorney for Defense Secretary Selection, Pete Hegseth, confirms to NBC News that the combat veteran and former Fox News host paid a settlement to a woman last year after she previously accused him of sexual assault in 2017. A California police department says it investigated a sexual assault allegation against Hexeth in 2017 and filed no charges. The attorney says Hexeth maintains his innocence and that the encounter was consensual, though one Senate Republican says it could sink his confirmation. We'll figure out if he can get confirmed or not. And, and I do think that Pete's a good pick for this position. And late today, President-elect Trump announced his pick for Transportation Secretary, former congressman and Fox Business host Sean Duffy. Lester. All right, Gabe Gutierrez, thanks. At the G20 meeting in Brazil today, President Biden making a strong appeal for continued support of Ukraine, sending that message to world leaders with Russia's foreign minister in the room. It comes after a Russian aerial attack and after President Biden suddenly approved Ukraine's use of long-range U.S. missiles to hit targets inside Russia, according to two U.S. officials. Tonight, the first lawsuit has been filed after the latest deadly E. coli outbreak. This one linked to organic carrots sold at major retailers nationwide. Ann Thompson has more. Oh my God, another freaking E. coli outbreak. Warning spreading on social media about some organic carrots. You guys should check your refrigerator. Possibly tainted with E. coli. The outbreak linked to the death of a Los Angeles County adult over 65 with medical conditions. 39 cases in 18 states are under investigation. 15 people hospitalized. The company recall involves bagged whole and baby organic carrots produced by Grimway Farms and sold at some of America's most popular stores, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's and Wegmans to name a few. 
no longer thought to be in stores. The fear is they could be in your refrigerator or freezer. If so, the CDC says throw them out. Careful. Food safety expert enough. Ben Chapman. Unfortunately, washing produce doesn't eliminate the issue. It might reduce the risk uh, a little bit, but that is really the issue that we have with fresh produce is that we can't wash it off. This follows the E. coli outbreak at McDonald's linked to slivered onions on quarter pounders. The company says it is spending $100 million on a recovery plan. With these two outbreaks, should we be worried about our nation's vegetable supply? I wouldn't say that we should be worried about our nation's vegetable supply. I will say that fresh produce always provides us with complications. Complications that can't be washed away. Ann Thompson, NBC News. In 60 seconds, the new safeguards in the popular gaming platform Roblox. But does it do enough?